Welcome to another edition of the Go Nose Podcast. I'm your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me and my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Um, a win is a win, man. I'm just glad that we got off this losing streak. Um, it's, it's, it's some things that I can, could uh, complain about, but I'm not going to today. I'll save that for the Wednesday podcast. Um, I think overall they, they did a phenomenal job. Um, the, um, the offense looked more creative. The defense played more inspired, um, except for the onside kick. I thought the special teams played okay. Um, there, there's still room for improvement, but you know, like I said, I'm not going to be a negative Nancy today. I'm going to enjoy this win, um, because it's just so hard to, you know, function as a fan after a loss. Um, just going to enjoy the win. Um, I just hope that I, I mean, and I'll say this when they, when they put the backups in against the Georgia Tech defensive starters, I thought Armella looked phenomenal at left tackle. And I, I still, for the life of me, can't figure out why he's not out there. I mean, I seen him like slam the starting defensive. And I, I realize it's Georgia Tech, but Robert Scott wasn't dominating that dude like that. And I wouldn't consider this complaining. This is just, you know, just something that can help the team um, perform better on offense. Um, I like the way Tua Feely was used. Um, He had that fumble there. Again, I'm not going to be – I'm not going to address the – the negative stuff until the next show, the next podcast on Wednesday. But um, I liked the way he was used. Um, I liked how Cam McDonald was used. Um, defensively, you just looked a little bit more active. Tackling was a little bit more crisp. Um, DBs were coming up and making tackles. Um Georgia Tech is not really a good football team. Um, I think in in the first quarter, we kind of played down to the competition. And that's what I alluded to um, on this past uh, podcast, this past Wednesday, that Florida State has historically has a habit of doing that, playing down to the competition. Um, so, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see um how they approach the uh the next game um i just hope that they come with the same intensity and ferocity that they had in this game and we all know what the next game is um you know my miami barely won today against uh virginia um, but like I said, throw the records out the window, man. <laughs> Miami will play harder. Miami will play different. They will play inspired. They're they're not going to want to get embarrassed by a rival. And uh, I'm looking for a very close, very hard fought game. Um you know, I think there's a lot of room room for improvement on this team, but this is this is this is how you win recruits, Mike Norvell. This is how you make headway in the state of Florida. Um, the head coach at Miami comes and signs the number four prospect in the state, and his team sucks. So either I mean, we already know he has a reputation for a great recruiter. He's not the great X's and O's guy. So if Miami sticks with him, 
He's going he's gonna to eventually find a good offensive coordinator and a defensive co- a good defensive coordinator to accommodate that talent that he's accumulating. And then we're going to be in trouble. So, you know, winning this game um, next Saturday would probably be in our best interest to try to make some headway as far as recruiting this year. Um I don't I don't want to get too far out in front of that. I want to enjoy this win against Georgia Tech for at least 24 hours before I start focusing on Miami and what you know they bring to the table because again, I don't it's it's been years where I say, "Hey, we're going to roll Miami." And they, they we come out there and we barely beat them. So, I don't I don't put I don't put anything in the win column until it's actually in the win column. Most of the people that I was listening to this week predicted a blowout against Georgia Tech. And, you know, I I didn't want to be in that uh, category just because, you know, the the, the fumble that Tua Philly had, stuff like that happens. The onside kick and stuff like that happens. So you just – any. You never know what's in a man's heart on any given day playing football or really any walk of life. So um, I never, you know, take anything for granted as far as a game, football, in the game of football, because you you just never know how that team is going to come out that day. They could just come out and just, you know (laughs) – just just have a level of intensity and focus that you've never seen on film. So, um, a win is a win. I enjoy it. I'm thankful we're five and three. And, you know, Mike Novell did a good job this week offensively. Uh, your boy, the deep defensive coordinator's name escapes me. <laughs> Um, you know I'm not good with names, so um uh, he 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 looked better this week. So um I you know Miami's gonna be cooking up some stuff. Um you you when we play down at Miami it's more it's use if we if if Miami's no good and we're good, it's usually gonna be at least a fifty fifty crowd. So I expect a lot of Florida State fans down there to fill up uh, Hard Rock Stadium. So um, that's to me, that's going to virtually be a home game for us because I don't think Miami has had any big crowds this year. Um, Miami is a um, fair, um, fair weather fan base. When they're great, the fans are great. When they suck. Nobody's coming to the games. So um, they're 4-4 four and four right now. I really can't say that they suck, but this is not even the way that this team has played this year. This, not, this is not even typical Miami for the last 10 years. This is worse. Um, and the Florida Gators are getting uh, waxed by Georgia as I record this uh, <laughs> instant reaction. So, um I'm glad, I'm kind of glad that the Hurricanes won because I didn't want them to come into this game against Florida State as like a must win, like backs against the wall. They're four and four, so they they can breathe a sigh of relief a little bit Um, because I think a team like that can be dangerous when they have to go against their rival to try to get a win, to try to even out their record. Um, you know, for Florida State, um, and it's it's just it it sounds just so ridiculous for my boys, man. But we have a chance to be bowl eligible. <laughs> my God, and uh, it 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 pains me to say that's like a big time goal. That's a milestone for us based on these last five years. And uh, I would be ecstatic. Um, You know, just looking at some of these teams, I mean, it's possible. 
It's possible to win out. It's possible. I think you would have to take today's effort and go times 10 in all three phases of the game. I don't I don't think that effort is going to beat Syracuse. I don't. They're a very good football team. Um, I don't think that effort would beat the Florida Gators. You know, it pains me to say, but they're they're a decent football team. They're they're again, they're gonna play inspired football against their arch rival. So you can't I don't think you can pencil anything. Even Louisiana is a good football team. I think they went like twelve and one last season. I know they're not that good this year, but the majority of those players are still on that team. So anything can happen. I don't I don't put anything in the win column until it's an actual win that goes in the win column. So um thankful for the win. I know I said I wasn't gonna do any complaining. I did a little bit. I'm gonna save the complaining for the next podcast. Um so enjoy the win. My fellow FSU fans, we finally off the three game losing streak. Um I hope you enjoyed it. Um as always, go knows. Thank you for listening. And hopefully we get a win against Miami. <laughs>